In this video, we're gonna dive in and break down a design style called Brutalism, which sounds pretty cool. However, Brutalism was originally an architectural style that made its way into design. So we're gonna break down several Brutalism motion graphic techniques that consist of texturing, big modern fonts, and futuristic elements. So if you're ready to build up your arsenal of motion graphic techniques, let's jump in and let's get started. So one theme that I find very consistent in the Brutalism style is texturing and big modern fonts. So we're gonna start off this big modern font right here and we wanna talk about how we can use textures uh, for the background and for the font. So for example, we can come here, bring in a texture image and all the project files you can download and get everything that we're using in this video, the links in the description. But we can bring this texture here instead of After Effects. We can then hit S on keyboard for scale and scale this down and position it how we see fit. And then we'll come here to our track mats and we'll set it to our title layer. And then we'll make sure we'll turn our title layer back on and set the blend mode for your texture to difference. But another thing we wanna do is add a texturized background. So I have this plastic image here and now we have this nice textured background. But one thing I'll do is to animate this is go to effect, distort and grab a turbulent displace. And I'll change turbulent to turbulent smooth there and I'll alt click the stopwatch for evolution and just type in time asterisk 200. And this will give a nice fluid based background animation. Another aspect that I like about Brutalism is the use of imagery. So for example, if you have a video or a photo, this is a good opportunity to let that asset be your pop of color. So all the other graphics are generally gonna be maybe black and white, whereas your image or video can be that asset that stands out. But we can also take this image and texture it as well. So I have this photo of this like this plastic bag. Once again, you can pretty much search for these things or you can just download our project files and get the assets. Um, but we can come here and bring this in. I'll set the blend mode to screen and I'm just gonna resize uh, this image. And I simply just take my photo, position it how I want it to be inside that texture. And then come here to the top, grab the rectangle tool and just kind of create this rectangle mask to fit inside our plastic bag here. So this will give the image a plastic bag texture. So without using textures, you would have something just plain like this, which does look good on its own, but essentially the texturing is a very big part of Brutalism in the world of design. So the next aspect of Brutalism that we're gonna take a look at is adding in futuristic assets into your work. So, you know, that can be pretty much whatever you want it to be, but you know, I find it's elements that help provide balance to your scene, but they also just kind of look unique and different. So one thing I can do to help add balance to our scene is add some just random symbols. So I'll grab the text tool and maybe just hit the plus symbol on my keyboard. By the way, the font I'm using in this video is gonna be Monument Extended Ultra Bold and I also have a regular font. This is a great modern and also somewhat of a futuristic typeface that I like using. By adding a graphic down here and to the other corners of the composition, this will ultimately help you know provide a little bit of balance and also uh, some of that futuristic aspect elements to it. And also your animations should be somewhat, you know, different as well. So I see like a lot of flickering animations in this style. So we'll go to our main title, come here to animate and add an opacity. And we'll set the opacity to 0%. And we'll open up the range selector, add a keyframe for start, move forward in time, maybe by a second or so, and set to 100%. Then go to the advanced tab and turn on randomized order. Alt click the stopwatch for random seed and type in time asterisk 800. And this will create a flicker animation for your title. And then what we can just simply do is take animator one, copy it. And then we can also just paste it to the other three text layers. And then we can just offset these layers in time so they don't animate it on at the same exact moment. And look at that, we've animated our title and we've also animated our plus symbols. So what about adding in this grid element? It's really easy to do this. I'll come here to the top, grab the rounded rectangle tool and just draw out a rounded rectangle like so. Beautiful. And then I'll go to layer, new, solid. Click OK. Go to effect, generate, grab the grid effect. Uh, change size from to width and height sliders. I'll set the width and height to maybe 100. I'll set the border to maybe four. And you can also just use this as like a background element if you wish, you know, it can make a difference to work. But what I'm gonna do is just quickly pre-compose this. So go to layer, pre-compose. We'll call it grid, move all attributes, click OK. Then we'll just go ahead and ask our keyboard for scale. I'll scale it down. I'll move it towards my box, make sure that it's filling the box completely so it'll be overlapping. And then all I'm gonna do is grab my rounded rectangle tool here at the top and just draw out a mask uh, on our grid so it'll only fit inside the box. Now to animate the grid, I'll go back to it real quick. Uh, and then I'm gonna select the grid effect, add a keyframe for anchor, move to the end of our timeline, and then just increase the X and Y anchor point in this one. And that will kind of add somewhat of a nice futuristic element into our work. Another, another thing I wanna do is add this line here, which is kind of looks like a waveform. I'm gonna grab the pen tool, make sure nothing's selected, make sure it's set to stroke and fill is set to none. And I'm just gonna draw off the straight line between my two pluses here to continue to add balance to my composition. Open this up. 
I'm gonna go into the contents, go to shape one, go to the stroke one, and I'm gonna hit this plus symbol right here. And this is gonna break it into lines, or should I say dashes. I can lower the dash amount and that will give me even more dashes. I can then go to the wave, increase the wave amount to, you know, whatever amount I want. Maybe like I'll do 70, 60%, we'll say that. And then I'll all click the stopwatch for phase and I'll type in time, asterisk, and I'll 200. So now I have this consistent animated line inside our project. Before we move further into the video, if you're working on projects that require this style of motion graphics, we have a template pack called Pulse, which comes with our Motion Duck extension that will allow you to preview and import templates into any After Effects and Premiere Pro project. Once a template is imported, you can change the template titles and other parameters to fit your project needs. We also have over 20,000 other templates for After Effects and Premiere Pro with the links in the description below. If you do purchase anything from our website, you will be supporting our YouTube channel, so thank you very much. So just moving ahead here, I added some extra graphics here on the side, a title and some social media icons, just to add even more balance and purpose to our scene so you can display whatever information you have to. Just so up to this point in this video, most of our brutalism techniques have been generally graphic design, which is a very little bit of motion graphics, but let's talk about some other ideas that are purely After Effects based. So for example, I can come here to layer, new adjustment layer, I go to effect, uh, distort, and grab, say, a CC lens effect, which to me seems like it'd be purpose for more of a futuristic type effect, but I could use this as like a transition into my scene. So I can come here and increase the size by a little bit. So I can have it start off like this, add a keyframe for size, move forward by a second, and just set the size back up to 500. And then it's like both keyframes, make them easy ease by hitting F9, go to your graph editor, and then just bring the handles in towards the center. And now we'll just have this nice in transition into our scene. I like it. Another thing we can do is go to effect, noise and grain, add some noise. You know, I don't know, set up to like 12%. We're not gonna uncheck use color noise like I normally do. And this will help bring a little bit of grit to your scene. And I think it's a good style because you know brutalism is about texturing, right? And one last thing I wanna talk about is maybe adding some opening, you know, pops of color to this to kind of theme with our photo. So this is all custom made here inside of After Effects. I'll show you how to quickly do it. All right, so what we need to do is go to layer, new, solid. Make sure it's a white solid and click OK. Then let's go to effect, noise and grain, and add a fractal noise. We'll set the contrast to 675-ish, and then we'll set the brightness to negative 100. Open up transform, go to scale, and we'll set this up to like, I don't know, 2700. Set the complexity to one, then alt click the stopwatch for evolution, type in time, asterisk 300. And then let's go to effect, noise and grain, and add a noise HSL. Set the lightness to 8% and all click the stopwatch for noise phase and type in time asterisk 1400. So then you'll have something like this and we can set our blend mode to screen and then we'll go to effect color correction tint. Let's grab our white color and let's set it to something that's like inside of our image. So I'll grab like this, I don't know, red or even warm sort of look here. So to just match your image. And now we've created this nice opening light leak. If you want, you can just trim the out points so then it's not up the entire time. So now you have a handful of techniques to produce some brutalism type work. Of course, this is just my perspective on it. Uh, I also have a few extra techniques that I put in my final example. So you're welcome to download the project files to digest uh, what I did here. So I did like an RGB split and also made it like another light leak example as well. So it's completely up to you what you want to do with this style. So hopefully now you have some new concepts that you can apply to your future projects. If you're new to our channel, please be sure to hit that subscribe button as we post multiple After Effects videos every single week and always be creative.